There is yet another Blu-ray sale going on. This time it's a Shout Select sale, which is going to last through March 10th, about a week from the time of this recording. And that brings us to today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, five recommendations for the Shout Select sale, mostly revolving around money, monsters, and good old rock and roll. Let's check it out. First off, I just want to say, I don't know about you, but when these movie sales are announced, I react with both uh, excitement and dread. Excitement because, well, maybe there's something there for a good price that I would like to get. Dread because, well, there's a space is always an issue, as you can see. And uh, some of the stuff that I got the last sale, I haven't even watched yet. So it's kind of a mixed blessing here. But at least this Shout Select sale is a small one, and not all the prices are so good that it's going to entice you. Uh, but I did choose five that I like and that have decent prices, and I'm going to go in chronological order. Uh, two of these have slip covers, by the way. I don't know if they still have them or not, if you care about that kind of thing. So be aware of that. And I'll also let you know where you can see these films in case you don't want to buy them. They all have special features, which you can check out on your own. And they're all listed as collector's editions. Our first pick is The Tammy Show from 1964. Two hours long, beautiful black and white. Tammy stands for Teenage Awards Music International. I think it was an awards thing they want to get out, give out every, every year, but it never really worked out. But that really doesn't matter. What's important is that this is a film concert from the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium in Southern California, featuring the top musical acts of the time, representing London, Liverpool, Hollywood, and Detroit. Little Steven Van Zant from, of course, the E Street Band, Bruce Springsteen's band, called this the greatest rock movie you've never seen. Now, our hosts for this are Jan and Dean. They were a singing group that did surf music, had a couple of hits. Nobody really listens to them anymore, but they're the hosts for the each musical act. And these acts include, get ready, Chuck Berry, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Marvin Gaye, the Beach Boys, the Supremes, the Rolling Stones, and probably most notably, James Brown. Uh, record producer Rick Rubin called this James Brown performance the single greatest rock performance ever filmed. And I believe the Stones came on after James Brown and they were sort of upstaged by him. Now, if you're a fan of Michael Jackson or of Prince, I think you'll see uh, where they got some of their moves and some of their ideas when you watch this James Brown section here. Everybody is performing live on stage. There's no none of that lip syncing going on. And some are uh, have the Wrecking Crew as the backup band. If you don't know who the Wrecking Crew are, basically they were top session musicians, played on so many albums from Beach Boy albums to Phil Spector albums. And uh, there's even a separate documentary about them called The Wrecking Crew if you want to look into it. Uh, there's a second disc on here called The, the Big TNT Show. That's uh, 90 minutes long from 1966, also in black and white. Uh, not quite as good or as famous as The Tammy Show, but that included some other acts such as Ray Charles, Bo Diddley, and the Ronettes, among others. Uh, this one comes with an excellent booklet. It's about 36 pages long, very informative. Hopefully the edition that they're selling now during the sale also has the booklet. And uh, where can you see The Tammy Show? You can see the whole thing on YouTube. If you don't want to see the whole thing, you can see different clips like the James Brown clip, different clips uh, uh, by themselves on YouTube. And you can also rent this and you can buy this. My second pick for the Shout Select sale is Brewster's Millions from 1985, 102 minutes long in color. It's a comedy. I believe everything else I'm going to show you today is a comedy. This is about a minor league baseball player who inherits $300 million unexpectedly, but first he must spend $30 million in 30 days as a condition to get his full inheritance. That stuff only happens in the movies, right? Um, now this stars Richard Pryor. I'm a huge Richard Pryor fan, particularly of his comedy albums, which I practically memorized when I was growing up. He is one of the greatest comedians ever, in my opinion. Natural, interesting. I believe Dave Chappelle was the one who said, 
you, a comedian shouldn't only just be funny, he should also be interesting. Well, that definitely is true with Richard Pryor, and I think there's a lot of truth to that statement. But uh, Richard Pryor, I don't really think, ever translated well to his films. Um, he, they were too tame, they weren't edgy enough for him. Uh, I just didn't care for almost all of his films. His concert films, those are the ones to see. I think there's at least two of those. That's the ones I would recommend. But he was also one of the writers on Blazing Saddles, and he was supposed to play the lead role of the sheriff, but something happened and he didn't play that. But I always wondered what that would have been like with him in the, in the lead role as uh, the sheriff in Blazing Saddles. Still, I think Brewster, Brewster's Millions is one of his better films, and a big reason for that is because the supporting role of John Candy as his friend and John Candy from the great SCTV. I love all those guys and gals that were on SCTV. I think they're all funny and so talented. This was directed by, believe it or not, Walter Hill. I don't know how many comedies Walter Hill did. He's usually doing more action-oriented things like The Warriors or um, The Driver. Uh, but this disc also includes the 1945 adaptation of Brewster's Millions this story has been done about 10 times, whether on radio or on, on film. There's been so many versions of this. Um, so where can you see Brewster's Millions? Apparently it's on YouTube for free. You can check it out there. You can rent it or you can buy it. Next up is Into the Night from 1985, 150 minutes long, in color. This one stars Jeff Goldblum as an engineer who's suffering from insomnia and from a cheating wife, and he suddenly becomes involved with a beautiful woman, played by the beautiful Michelle Pfeiffer, who's on the run from some mobsters. The rest of the film is basically a chase through the streets of Los Angeles. I always think of this as sort of an LA version of Martin Scorsese's film, After Hours, which of course takes place in one night in New York City. After Hours is a much, much better film, trust me. Um, John Landis directed this one. He has also has a bit part that's pretty funny in this film. And of course, he's known for An American Werewolf in London and The Blues Brothers and so many other films. Uh, there are so many cameo appearances in this film from directors, from uh, filmmakers, and from other actors. And I don't want to give away any of it because a lot of the fun of watching this is seeing who shows up. Oh, there's so-and-so. A lot of surprises here. Uh, also, a hitman is played by David Bowie, a very evil hitman. And there's a funny story they tell in one of the extras where uh, David Bowie's character was supposed to be this real kind of grungy guy. And so the costume designer was trying to find some really disheveled clothes for him. And finally she said, this guy's a clothes horse. No matter what I put on him, he looks good. I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, anecdote. B.B. Uh, King, the legendary B.B. King, uh, sings the title song Into the Night, and I will warn you, once you hear it, you'll never think about this film without thinking about that song again. It's quite the earworm. So where can you see Into the Night? I don't see it streaming. You can rent it or you can buy it. My next pick is Dragnet from a 1987, 106 minutes long, in color, this has Dan Aykroyd playing the nephew of Joe Friday, who was played famously by Jack Webb in the original uh, film and two versions of the TV show. Jack Webb possibly played it on radio too, I'm not sure. And uh, he's paired up with a more laid back modern day detective played by Tom Hanks. Now Aykroyd is basically playing Jack Webb, and, uh, but only placed in 1980s. And I'm not sure if you're not, fam if you're not familiar with Jack Webb and the Dragnet series, how much you're going to get this, but he moves like him, he dresses like him, he talks like him. It's a very, very funny performance. But hopefully, even if you're not that familiar with Dragnet, you'll still find it funny. And of course, the, a lot of the humor comes from the contrast between uh, Dan Aykroyd's character being really anachronistic in 1980s Los Angeles and Tom Hanks kind of playing off of that as being a modern day guy. Uh, it's much funnier than I expected really, even though at the end it kind of gets over the, over the top and a little bit silly, like a lot of the comedies did of that era. Uh, this one features also uh, Dabney Coleman 
and Christopher Plummer, and once again, a few surprising cameos, especially if you're familiar with the old Dragnet show. I think you'll find those very, uh, a lot of fun. So where can you see Dragnet? Well, right now, I don't see it streaming. You can rent it or you can buy it. My final recommendation for the Shout Select Sale is Matinee from 1993, 99 minutes long, in color. This takes place during the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 60s when a low-budget horror film producer and director is uh, going to premiere his newest film in this small town. Now, the producer is obviously based on producer-director William Castle, uh, played by John Goodman here. It's a perfect choice to play him. And uh, if you know William Castle, you know he was famous for using a lot of gimmicks in the theater, like putting uh, little shock devices under some of the seats, having things fly through the theater related to the film. He'd have an, a fake nurse in the lobby in case you got so scared you were feeling faint. So a real showman. And uh, that's, uh, that's who's coming to this town. Uh, but the film is only partly about him and partly about the teenagers who live in this town and what they're going through. And uh, I would like to see more about the William Castle type character than about the usual teenage stuff. Uh, the film that uh, he's premiering in this uh, small town is called Mant, which is about a, a man who turns into half man, half ant after a nuclear accident. So think of sort of like the fly. Um, the funny thing is you only see clips of Mant uh, periodically through the film, but on the disc, you see the full version of Mant, uh, which is only about 50 minutes long, and it's in black and white, and it's a pitch perfect parody of those types of films from that era. That's really a lot of fun. And another perfect choice was the director, Joe Dante. He knows this stuff. Uh, he directed Piranha and The Howling and Gremlins and The Burbs. I think this is definitely one of his best films. And so where can you see Matinee? Well, you can right now either rent it or you can buy it. Feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down below. Uh, maybe there's something else you'd like to suggest for the Shout Select sale, or maybe you've seen some of these films, you'd like to uh, respond to that or give your uh, feedback about that. Uh, leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Subscribing is free. Also free is we're on the Letterbox app under the Kazdoy Closet. There's a link to that down below in the show notes. That's where we leave brief written reviews of other things we're watching that we don't talk about here. Uh, most recently, Tokyo Story and Candyland. Talk about two films that couldn't be more different from each other. Anyways, hope you like this one. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.